already it's crippling the economies, the health economies. Forget, let's you know, let's take away the, the the personal cost and the loss of personal ability, the loss of family ability, the, the reduced work times. Just at the health cost, it's already crippling the economies, and we're looking at it just blowing out far, far further down the track. When in fact, for type two diabetes, we've actually got a cure. You know, well, you can't say cure because that's you know, but we can put it into remission. We can put it into reversal, whichever way you look at it. And if you know, if someone's got poorly controlled diabetes for one year, I think it reduces their life expectancy by another hundred days. You know, I think that's the rough figure. I mean, I think David Unwin refers to it, but it's. Yeah, it, it's quite clear. The moment you have poorly controlled diabetes, we know that all health outcomes at a microvascular level just cause tissue damage, whether or not I use the term the Maillard reaction, which is a cooking term, or you heat carbohydrate and you combine it with protein, that's what makes food go brown. So if you go to the bakery shop, you see all those you know, brown-coloured <laughs> breads and pastries. I actually just think, oh, that's, that's the Maillard reaction. But the same thing happens in the body when you actually increase your blood glucose, a significant portion of it, probably 80% of it goes into the tissue, just filters across. And in the tissues, that glucose combines with the protein under the effect of body heat and you're effectively toasting every organ where that occurs. So if you have poorly controlled diabetes, one of the mechanisms, one of the major mechanisms, the toasting, you're toasting your brain, your eyes, your kidneys, your skin, it's literally right down the track. And guess what? Over a long period of time, that slow, slow toasting of your body gives us all the complications diabetes of diabetes and whether or not it's end organ failure of your heart, your brain, your kidneys. They're the, they're the big killers. <clears throat> and it also screws up with the metabolism related to our immunity and our cancer mechanisms. So it... it the future is really bleak from a health perspective. I'm not being dramatic about that. I'm not just the only one. But we've actually got a mechanism to address the vast majority. So low, reducing your carbohydrate immediately gives you better control of your, yeah, you know, we call it therapeutic carbohydrate restriction, low carb, LCHF, low carb, healthy fat, keto, whichever way you want to look at. Diabetes, type two, well, all diabetes is an inability of the body to control the blood glucose based on what the body eats. So in type one, you don't have enough insulin, so therefore you actually can't produce insulin to, to look after the glucose, which hits the body. And in type two diabetes, you don't have an effective mechanism. You develop a state of insulin resistance, so the insulin no longer can actually maintain that blood glue, can keep the, get the blood out, sorry, can keep the glucose out of the bloodstream as soon as possible. I think we look at carb and everyone says, oh, glucose is essential for life. And I actually think we a tiny bit is essential for life, but the excess we're putting ourselves at risk with is causing so much damage. That talk's called carbohydrate, the dose is the poison. Four grams, one teaspoon of glucose is enough to have a detrimental effect on your body, which by is a definition of toxicity. When something has a negative impact on a system, that's called toxicity. For example, one slice of bread has five teaspoons of glucose in it. So literally at one teaspoon, we are seeing a detrimental effect on the system. My perspective is that when you eat glucose, the body does everything in its capacity to get it out of the bloodstream, which sort of makes sense because when in nature, whenever we were able to get it, which was seasonally available fruit, was the time of plenty and it was the time that our bodies one ate all this sugar and carbs to store it as fat for winter hibernation. All animal life actually survives on the thing called the Krebs cycle, which is where nutrients <clears throat> or food, carbohydrate, protein, and fat is turned into acetyl CoA. So we generate ATP, adenosine triphosphate. It is the mechanism of life. The Krebs cycle, you can't argue with it. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're an, a, a bird or a, a rabbit, or a bear, or a human, uh, we're all using the same Krebs cycle. Each animal species develops different pathways to actually work that efficiently. And our pathway is actually 
our preferred fuel state is our is actually protein and fats, not carbohydrate. We actually get carbs out of the bloodstream as soon as possible. 